Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today's session is about percentages. Percentages is quite important area for Lemon Plus and SATs, even for Key State 3 as well. There are two basic principles for the calculation of percentages. The first one is if percentage is given, then number will be divided by 100. And in other case, if the percentage is not given, is not provided, then number will be multiplied by 100. For example, case A is 70 out of 200. If you can see in this one, it's clearly said, is how is the total is 200 and we have to calculate 70 of 200 in term of percentage. So if you can see on these questions, percentage is not provided and we have to calculate the percentage and how uh, we have to calculate calculate the 70 of 200 in percentage and then we can go towards part b in part b is 20 percent of 121 so in this case this percentage is provided so what we can do is we have to multiply it is 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 20 divided by 100 and multiply by 121 and in first case we have to divide 70 by 200 times uh, 100 so th this clear is a percentage is provided then you have to divide by 100 and if percentage is not given then you multiply by 100 to calculate the percentage okay now we have two questions one is three out of ten and the second one is 64 out of 200. In these two questions, if you can see is percentage is not provided and we have to calculate the percentage of 3 out of 10 and the percent of 64 out of 200. Now we can solve the first one, 3 out of 10. So firstly, you have to write down 3 and then you write a fraction line and then write 10. So it means 3 out of 10. Then, because in this case, the percentage is not provided and we learn earlier, if you multiply by 100, then you can calculate the percentage of anything. So we can follow the principle. We have to multiply it by 100. And we can see is 3 out of 10 is in fractions. 100 is not in fractions. So we draw a fraction line and then we draw 1. Now you can see is 3 out of 10 and 100 in 1. So you can see both in fractions. And then, the other thing is, if you can simplify this one, we can easily simplify this one. And then another thing as well is, whenever you have a fractions, uh, in, in, in the middle of the fraction, you have time signs, so you can easily change either the position of numerator or denominator. So why we can change the reason? Because we can easily simplify by changing denominator and numerator position. In this case, if we can change the position of uh, move put denominator 1 to 10 and 10 to 1, then we can easily simplify 10 with 100. So what we can do is we try to change the position of denominator. So we have 3 over 1 now and the other one is 100 out of 10. And we can easily simplify 100 out of 10, we can read the table 10 up to 100, 10 goes 10 times to make 100, so it means 10 make 10 times 100. So what's left over, that is 3 over 1 times 10 over 1, and then numerator multiplied with numerator, and denominator multiplied with denominator. So we have two numerator, one is 3, another is 10, and denominator 1 and 1. So 3 times 10 is 30. And 1 times 1 is 1. See, the simplified answer is 30%. So it means 3 out of 10 is actually 30%. Now we'll move to our second questions. Second question is 64 out of 200. If you can in these questions, percentage is not provided. So we can write 64 and then we write, I draw a fraction lines and then we write 200. And to convert into percentage, we have to multiply by 100. If you can see, 
64 over 200 in the fractions, 109 in the fractions. So you draw a fraction line and you write one uh, in denominator. And then the same concept is either you can change the position of numerator or denominator to simplify easily. So we can do uh, change the position of denominator. So now the new position of denominator is one come under the 64 and two moves and come under the 100. Okay, and now we can see is this is 100 and this is 200. And it's quite simple. If you can read, we already know 100 two times make 200. So if you read the table 100, 100 to power 100 is 1 and 100 times 2 is 100. So the answer is 1 over 2. No, the numerator multiplied by numerator and denominator multiplied by denominator. 64 times 1 is 64 and 1 times 2 is 2. Now, still you can easily simplify. This is 64. Either you have to do basic division or you straight away simplify. If you do basic division, this is 64, this is 2, this is 6. The so 2 make 3 times 6 and 2 make 2 times 4. So your answer is 32%. Now we have a reasoning question about percentages. Question is a 200 gram. A 200 gram bar of chocolate contains 58 gram of fat. What percentage of the chocolate is fat? So this is the reasoning question. As you can see is we have to calculate the percentage of fat in to uh, in 58 gram of uh, 58 out of 200. So uh, the total weight of the bar is 200 gram and the fat content is 58 gram. And we have to find 58 out of 200 in percentage. We follow the principle in which we know is if percentage is not provided and we need to calculate percentage, we have to multiply by 100. So according to, according to principles, we can write down 58 out of 200 times 100. And if you can see the first one is 58 out of 200, that is in fractions. So we have to write 100 in a fraction as well. The next bit is we have to change the position of denominator. So we move the denominator y to easily simplify the number. So if we change the denominator position, 200 go under the 100 and we easily simplify 100 by 200. We already know 100 two times is 200. So if you read the table hundreds, one time 100 divided by 100 is 1 and 100 two times is 200. Now you have 58 and 1 in numerator and 1 and 2 in denominator. So numerator multiplied by numerator, 58 times 1 is 58 and 2 times 1 is 2 and 58 divided by 2 is 29 and the answer is 29%. It means the fat content in a chocolate bar is uh, 29%. Question number 4 is 20% of 40 and question number 5 is 60% of uh, 40. Okay, if we have that kind of question, in this kind of case, percentage is provided and we learn in the principle if percentage is provided, then you have to divide by 100. So then the number which have percentage sign is given, that number divided by 100. So in this case, 20 is with percentage, so we have to divide 20 by 100. So 20 by 100 and off mean times, and then we write on 40. So if you can see here's 20 over 100, that is in fractions, 40 is not in fractions. So as you draw a fraction line and another fraction line, we write on 1. Next bit is you have to change, we should change the position of denominator. In this case, we can easily simplify 20 over 100, so we don't need to change the denominator positions. So if you can see is how many times 20 go in 100. Instead of you try to solve and you have to read 20 table up to 100, it's slightly complex for 
uh, year five, year six student. So I can give a short trip, a short tip. That tip is basically, if you can see, is in numerator and in denominator, they have the same number of zero at the end. So zeros will be cancelled. So in this case, if you can see, it's in 20, there's one zero on the top that go at the end and then 100 have one zero at the end as well. So these two zero will be cancelled. Then the next bit is you have 20 over 10 times 40 over 1. Now you change the position of denominator. We get 10 easily go in 40. So what we can do is you have to see here 2 over 1 times 40 over 10. Same concept if the numerator and denominator have same number of zero at the end, they can easily cancel. So 40 zeros and 10 zero will be cancelled. So what left over just 4 over 1. So numerator multiply with numerator and denominator multiply by denominator. So 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. 8 over 1 is 8. So the answer is 8. Now we move towards next question. Next question is 60% of 40. And if in this case as well, percent is provided, we straight away write down 60 over 100 of mean times. And then we write down 40. First one in a fraction. So we have to go 40 in a fraction as well. We draw a fraction line and then write down 1. And then, and that is, uh, we normally would change the denominator position or sometimes we can do numerator position as well. But in this case, we can easily simplify 60 or 100 and we bring the same concept. If you have same number of zeros at the end in denominator and numerator, they would be cancelled. So 60 zeros cancelled with 100 zero at the end. So what's left over? Just 60, uh, 6 over 10 times 40 over 1. Now you change the position of denominator to simplify 10 with 40. So we can write in 6 over 1 and times 40 over 10. So this 0, 10, 0 with 40, 0 will be cancelled. We have same number 0 at the end. So what's left over just 4 over 1. So numerator multiple numerator, denominator multiple denominator. 6 times 4 is 24 and 1 times 1 is 1. And the answer is 24. In question 6 and 7, if you can see, this is comparative analysis. So we compare three, four different things together. So if you can see question number six, so first value is given in percentage, second value is given in fraction, and third value given in decimal. And if the question is, in the question they can ask you to write down smallest to largest and large or either largest to smallest. So what we can do is we get the all three numbers are present in three different way. First one in frac percentage, second fraction, third in decimal. So best way is you have to convert all in one way. Either you have to convert all in percentage, all in fractions, or all in decimal. And if you can see on this one, I can easily convert all in decimal, even in percentage or fractions. If I convert 30 in uh, fractions, I can write down is 30 over 100. And 28 over 100 is already in, in the fractions. And 0.32. If I write on that one in a fraction, I can write on 32 over 100 and then I can compare together. Another thing is if I write down all in a uh, term of percentage, so you have to, the first one is 28 over 100. So you have to times by hundreds, that will be 28%. Then the other one is 0 0.32 times 100 and you have to convert that one into percentage as well. Third thing is how you convert into decimal to compare all of these three. So what I can do, you have to convert first 30% into decimal, 28 out of 100 in decimal, and third part is already in decimal. And then I can compare which value is the big or which one is the smallest. So I can easily order. Okay. So in these questions, they said is compare which value is the largest. So what I can do, I have to convert all in decimal. So 30, I can easily convert 30 uh, over 100 and that give you straight away is 0 0.30. And if I can write down 28 over 8 over 100 and that give you 
0.28 and the third one is already is 0.32 and if you compare all these three values and in term of decimal if we can see which decimal is the big that is 0 0.3 so the right answer is 0 0.32 now we move towards question number seven. If you can see question number seven, same technique, uh, first one in decimal, second in fraction, third one in percentage. So it's entirely up to you. Either you have to convert all of them into decimal, even in fractions, even in percentage. So we carry on, for example, we have to convert in decimal. First one is already in decimal. Second one I can easily change. This is one over two. It means 0 0.5. Uh, and the third, sec third one is 58 percent so 58 percent mean 58 over 100 simply for that one that is equal to 0 0.58 and third one is already 0 0.56 if i write in here 0 0.56 then 0 0.5 i have to add zero at the end and then is 0 0.58 so in this value they can ask you find the smallest value so which one is the smallest value is 0 0.50. It means half is the smallest number in this sequence.